Hello everyone, thank you for checking out today's video. In this one, we're gonna be covering the timesheet portal on ServiceNow. Now this is from ServiceNow's documentation, so if you don't know what the timesheet portal is, it allows you to categorize and display all your assigned tasks in a single view for a given week. The portal enables you to record time spent on tasks on a day-to-day -day basis and submit the timesheet in a single action. So this is a great resource if you have employees within your business or the company that you work for or government agency or whatever, and you want a centralized place where you can go in and you can record time or users can go in and record time and then you can report on that time as needed. So let me go ahead and show you guys what, actually before I do that, if you even wanna get the timesheet portal on your instance, there is a fee associated with it. If you're just on your PDI, you shouldn't have to worry about it, but through your work instance, you probably wanna check with your account representative and it's called the time card management plugin. And after you install that, that will give you access to the timesheet portal. You may need to sign out and sign back in after you're done installing this. And then once you do, you come over to timesheet portal on your all apps, you'll see it here under timesheets. And this is the out of the box view. So there is some configuration that you guys probably wanna do like these different categories. You're probably gonna to want to edit those or add in new ones. So um, that's kind of out of scope for this video. I'm just giving you guys a quick glance, but yeah, you can go in, you can change these different categories. Um, we, on our work instance, we have all sorts of um, business rules and stuff in place. Like when they add admin, it automatically adds admin as the category. There's, um, watch, let me show you real quick. So I'll come back. I'll kind of do a full glance, um, a full view of everything on here. But yeah, you see when you select admin, um, we have admin automatically get selected from the category. But for us, when we select admin, it'll automatically add admin as like a short description because some people like to use the time card view, which is a little bit different. That's just like a standard list view. So some people like to submit their time cards through there, but ServiceNow is pushing users to work with the timesheet portal. It's a little bit more intuitive for users to use. And yeah, from this, well, let me go back. So when you come up here, if it works correctly, we should have some different tasks that are assigned to you or group tasks. Um, and then from here, you can go ahead and they'll have like an add to uh, timesheet option, similar to what you see here. So let's actually try something. I'm jumping around a lot, but I promise I'll cover everything. So when you go to your different tables here, there's a few things that you'll need to do. So one of the first things you'll need to do is you'll need to add this time worked field. And what that's doing, it's tracking the time for the user while they're on that record. So right now you can see that it's tracking me at 14 seconds on this record. Now, if I were to save this record and we come down here to the related list, we have our time worked. So let's go ahead and save it. I'll just show you guys what I'm talking about. So you can see it adds an entry. Now, when I reload the page, it picks up where the last, um, the 22 seconds, and then this is the new session. So it just keeps adding on new entries every time I save it. And if I were to, I don't think I can assign this record to myself because I'm an admin and I don't think the admin is assignable on the PDI. Yeah, I don't see it on here. But let's say we assigned it to Abel Tutter. Let me spell that name, Tutter. It's Abel something. Okay, you're not selectable either. Weird, man. Okay, so let's do, we'll do Andrew. So Andrew Oach. And then if I were to save the record so that he saved as the assigned to, and then we'll come back to this exact same record while I'm impersonating Andrew. And I don't know if Andrew will actually be able to access the timesheet portal. I may need to give him roles for the timesheet portal, but let's just see if he'll have access to it. So if Andrew were to come over here to that same incident record, and you see time worked is building up here. I might still be counting it towards my system administrator. Okay, let me try something here. It might be because he doesn't have the correct roles. This is the out of the box one, so the set behaves a lot different than my work one does. So let me see, let's go over to users. And where are you, Andrew? There you are. Roles. 
see if there's a time, I think just called time card. Um, let's just give him time card user. And again, that wasn't the correct way to do that. I should have made a time card group and then added him to the group, but for sake of time, we're just trying to figure out what role we need here. Okay, go ahead and save it. Still not adding it. What is going on here? Let's see, does he even have access to the timesheet portal? He does. Okay, interesting. So for some reason, it's not saving it for Andrew, but it was saving it for my other account. So maybe someone in the comments will know why that is. Maybe it requires an, an additional role or something to count the time worked out of the box. Um, but what it should have done is it should have counted it for Andrew because he's technically working the record too, or he's charging time against the record because he's on it. Um, but yep, so this is what I was talking about before. So because that record is assigned to Andrew, we have the option under tasks to go ahead and add to timesheet. Let's do that here. And if something isn't showing up there, you could just put in the, the record number here as well under search. And we can see if uh, we can test that here. Let's go back to incident, get another random incident number. Because sometimes you'll be working a record and it may not be assigned to you, but you still want to charge time against it. Oh, maybe you can't. So yeah, like I said, there's a lot of out of the box functionality that will need to be adjusted. Um, this could be for a lot of different reasons. It could be because Andrew may not have a license. He may not have an ITIL license. So maybe he can't read this record because it's not assigned to him. So there's a lot of different reasons why, um, this may not be showing up here. It could be out of the box functionality for the time sheet portal, that time card portal that you can't select records that aren't assigned to you. So like I said, there's a lot of configuration that goes into this, but, um, once you guys get it the way that you want it, I'm sure that it'll be, uh, probably better than, the solution that you guys are um, currently using. So while you're on here, you can either do an inline edit to change the time for the days. So say Andrew worked four hours that day, four hours that day, four hours that day, four hours that day, and just hit enter. What that does, that saves the time that we just made on the edits. And I don't think I even need to select enter. You could probably just click away. Yeah, it does the same thing. And then if you come over to the ellipsis, you have some different options here. You can add a note. So if you want to add a note, um, OT, but something like that. So if someone were to come over and look at that entry, they could see Andrew's notes about it. And then if you come over here to open form view, it gives you this pop-up. I hope, hope you guys can see this. I don't know if I'm sharing the, my full screen or just the window, but if you guys can't see it, it's just a little pop-up that has like the category, the task, the times, for the days, it just gives you a different view to edit things then a little save button. And there's also a paper clip to add an attachment if you need to. Um, there's also a delete time card entry, so you can delete that entry. Then you can also submit your time card. So by default, it's gonna be under pending. So once you're done with everything, you can go ahead and submit it. And then depending on the workflow that you have in place, it may send a notification to your supervisor or um, something like that. And you see, we got a notification that showing that we got it submitted. And if you use these different arrows, you could jump to different weeks. And then over here, if you come over to the timesheet form view, it takes you to a, a little bit of a different view. So this just shows you the week of in this view here. So you can add comments, you could add notes, you can see all your time card entries for that week. You could add new time card entries for that week. So this is the, the other view that I was talking about that some users prefer to use. So if you select new, this is kind of what it looks like if you don't want to edit it on the timesheet portal. And there is this copy from previous timesheet option. So that'll just pull over all your time cards from the previous week in case you have a lot of duplicates so that we don't have to put them all in again. But that is the gist of it, guys. So like I was saying, there is a lot of configuration that goes into this. And depending on however your company wants to set it up, you know, I'm sure you can research it and figure it out yourself. So it's, um, 
It's a great tool though, once you get it the way that you want. And I think your users would really appreciate how simple it is to, to add and edit your time. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving this video a like. Please also consider subscribing to the channel. Catch you all in the next one very soon.